we are back, folks. Another edition of the Michigan Insider Breakdown, this time focused on the defense, as we do every week. The former Michigan assistant, Vance Bedford, obviously has coordinated defenses at a number of stops, coached a lot of pros and greats, inclu- including Charles Wilson. Now he's coaching us. We got the, <laughs> the, the benefit of getting coached by Vans, don't call me Keith Sweat Bedford. <laughs> so Nobody, <I'm> baby. <laughs> <laughs> so Vans, hey man, they didn't have nobody on that NIU defense that could play with Michigan last week. Yeah, I mean, they probably knew that on the scout, man, because they, they went in, they were very intentional about working on that passing game. So the NIU defense couldn't do anything with Michigan. Meanwhile, on the other side, the NIU offense had very little success against Michigan, but for one drive, that second drive of the game when they got Michigan a little off kilter. But other than that, I mean, it was a good day at the office for the Michigan defense. Yeah, it, it certainly was for the entire team. You would hope that the University of Michigan plays the NIU like they did. The better players going to show out, and they did. The best team played the best when they had to, and they're getting better every week. I mean, I, I would hate to be the next opponent because you're going to see a better team – this coming Saturday and what you saw this past week. They're starting to gain confidence. They're believing in the scheme. They're believing in each other. And I'm excited to watch these guys continue to play and have great success. What would you say to fans that said, hey, man, you can't really tell anything by them beating Northern Illinois 63 to 10. Like, that didn't tell them nothing. That You really didn't learn anything by them beating up on a, on a Washington team as bad as they were. Washington, who came out, by the way, and beat Arkansas State 52 to 3 pit. Uh, Western Michigan, we don't, went on the road and beat Pitt, but still you got some fans that saying, hey, we still don't know if this is a good defense. What would you say to that? I say, I know. I know it's a good defense because when you go out and you beat people the way they have been beating people, that tells you a lot right now. And they went and just physically whipped a big Washington offensive team. This past weekend, they dominated a team that was decent, but good teams, they blow out bad teams. And that's what they've been doing. And they've been improving every single ball game. Uh, so I'm excited for this team and really for the fans. They should be jumping up and down. Don't worry about the what is. Let's worry about what's going on. What's going on? They are spanking people. They take them to the woodshed. And they holding no prisoners right now. Keep on doing it, uh, Michigan defense. I'm a woodshed fan. I'm, I'm behind you 100%. <laughs> All right, Van. So first play of the game. First play of the Ooh. game. This one is with, this one is with Telestration. I thought about Vance Bedford because it, it started out the same way as the last game. And there was a play in the first game. You say, hey, man, if I'm in the meeting room, I'm I'm showing how fired up I am. They're going to know Vance Bedford like how the Michigan defense came out on this play. So I thought, man, this, this one probably got Vance a little fired up. So let me pull this one up right now. You can talk us through it. All right, Vance. So you remember against Washington, right? Mm-hmm. Started out the game, you know, defensive line wins their battles. Uh, the linebacker and this Josh Ross, he comes in, fills and cleans it up. And lo and behold, look at this first play of the game versus Northern Illinois. Man, they run your old fashioned three, four defense, your two gapping inside out. And that means if you do a great job with your, your tackles, the linebacker is free to the ball. Look at both linebackers. You can't ask for anything better than that, but I like more than anything else. Look at a number of Wolverine hats around that ball. That's what's impressive. The effort, the pursuit, that will win you a lot of games. If you can make a mistake, there's one or two, three more guys right behind them to clean things up. This gets me fired up. I got to be honest. I mean, if Michigan fans can't get excited about that, I don't know what to take. I mean, either give them something, some Viagra or something. I don't know if you can say that on, on, on TV or radio or whatever, but they need some help. I'm just being honest because this is good football right here. This is exciting <laughs> Michigan football. That's how football should be played. Oh, man. All right, Vance. <laughs> I'm just being honest. But I, don't me, don't, I, don't hey, me I get excited about football, but not I don't that. know if I can use that term or not. But that's okay. I did. <laughs> if somebody want to come and find me, I'm good with that because I don't work. I'm retired. I can't pay nobody no money. I'm good. <laughs> hey, no, it's all right, man. Hey, you get excited. Hey, look. <laughs> Excitement about football is a good thing. You want the players to be excited about football. I get excited about football. I don't quite get that excited, but I get excited <laughs> about football. All right. So, uh, so you know, as you get deeper, though, Vance, we, we saw uh, in the second series, right, 
they yeah. started having some success and we will get into a couple of the plays where they had some success on that second drive. And by they, I'm talking about Northern Illinois, but there was an instance in the red zone when they slammed the door, it was a second and 10. And it was very reminiscent of that first play of the game, but it wasn't Josh Ross this time. It was young junior Colson. And I want to show this play number one to highlight the defensive lineman on this because they don't get a lot of glory when they when they're holding up the defensive line or the offensive line to keep the linebackers because they don't get a lot of glory for that, but it was key on this play. And then young number 25, who is linebacker coach, told me before the season, he said, man, he can run fast. He might not know which way to go. Probably can't <laughs> find his way to the bathroom, but he can get wherever he's going fast. Well, he knew where to go on this play, Vance, and it was key. It was the key play in the series to hold them to a field goal. All right, so Vance, you see a second and 10. I mean, they're knocking on the doorstep, right? They've they've pushed Michigan around other time, uh, some of the time. They have, uh, you know, forced Michigan into some bad run flip, run fits, caught them in some, uh, in some defenses that weren't optimal for the looks they were facing. So this is a key moment, second and 10. And then watch this young fella here, number 25, come off his, come off this three tech butt here and make this play. And they're giving you a cover four shell. But again, I, I don't, I'm going to talk about the front first. They do a great job in protecting the linebackers. So now your linebacker is free to make a clean hit on this play. He does a great job pulling the trigger. Once he sees the run, he runs through his gap. It's a one-yard gain. You can't ask me anything better than that from the front four and the two linebackers. Man, that's good football again. Yeah, mean, we have up front, they're winning. The linebackers reading keys, playing downhill. That would win a lot of games in the Big Ten. Yeah, Coach Hollick back at Flint Central. I don't know what Coach Hollick is doing back these days, but all, this, all the Flint guys know Andre Weathers was coached by Coach Hollick. Coach Hollick used to say, don't catch blocks. Don't sit up in there and catch blocks. You see it trigger fire. I don't know if the people can see this, but if you watch the three technique, that's the guy to the field, that guy right there. Mm -hmm. You watch him right here. Watch him split that. Look at that. That's impressive. And, and if look you can do at, that versus Wisconsin and Michigan State, that'll be two wins for us. Look at look at Chris Hinton, though, push the oh, guard back in the center. So the center, the center was going to try to come off and get him, and he couldn't. He couldn't, yeah. I mean, those two guys inside, that is dominating football right there. Those two guys can play like that in the Big Ten. Again, Michigan will have a great season, a chance to win the Big Ten championship. Yeah, that's that's big time stuff right there by those guys, and it was key on this series to shutting the door. So that's that's uh, you know that's Mozzie Smith and Chris Hinton, they're they're a combo of of interior guys that there've been a lot of expectations for over the years, and and now they're rising to the occasion. So kudos to those young men yeah. for being able to do that so far this year. All right, so Vance, now as we move on, as we move deeper into some of these plays, man, it we saw on that second series a couple of instances where they were able to make some things happen by they, I mean, Northern Illinois. One of the things that they really – sort of got Michigan on was when they were where they would trade those tight ends. They would flip the strength of the formation and Michigan would try to adjust and adapt to it. And they caught them in that twice on that series. Back and, to back. Yeah, back to back, man. And you know, you could tell that hey man, that's something they're gonna have to adjust to or or they're gonna keep getting gouged by it. So I'm gonna bring this up and then you can talk us through why this was a compromising situation for the Michigan defense. All right, so Vance, here you go. And this is with Telestration. Okay. Right. So they traded the two tight ends and Michigan switches everybody up front. They playing technique with their D-line. So right now, you see a four on three tight end trade. Mm -hmm. So you see they have three guys. We got a defensive end, a five technique and a linebacker. One, two, three. They have four guys. Mm -hmm. There we go. Four guys in the offensive line to block three guys. 
And so really We're outnumbered to that side right now. And so the safety, the safety who is who is that like, he has a he got to come up and feel, but that's he gonna be feeling well way down the field, right? That's exactly right. He's he's too deep. This is a running formation right now. They have more numbers to that side than we have defenders, so we're short. So is they're there able any... to double team guys to the linebacker, they're gonna gain seven, eight yards every every clip. So is there something they could have done? Like what what could you do in this situation when they when they trade the tight ends like that? What's the adjustment? Man. There's two ways to look at it. One, you can slide your linebackers over to make it even count, or you bring the safety down closer to the line of scrimmage. So now he could get he could fit faster. Right now, as you just saw, they double team everybody. Mm-hmm. And so all of the back was patient. He found a crease. It's a seven, eight yard game. They don't have enough guys right now. And right. that's uh-huh. one play that the offensive line, they got the best of the Michigan's defensive line. Right. And I'll show you the uh, there was another one where, like you said, back to back, they hit them back to back on this. Uh, and you knew that they they felt like they had found something. Mm-hmm. And they I guess they did for a, a quick second there. They did find I think yeah, Michigan coaches made a great adjustment to right, adjust so this, to the plays. This is the I'll have you talk through that adjustment, but this was the other the other time they hit them on that same series, same action. And the same issue. See, so the safety is closer, but the issue right now is 32, you outside linebacker. He's forced. He has to stay outside in. And he lost leverage. But again, they have numbers. As you can see, they double team everybody. And again, this is a missed assignment by the defensive end. Just stay outside. Mm-hmm. It should be a one yard game, but they had numbers again. Gotcha. All right, so you said that the Michigan defense made a a great adjustment to that after this series. So what did they do? They got the safety closest to the line of scrimmage, draw playing man versus these guys, little three deep zone, and they take it away just matching up numbers. Because again, football is about count. I should tell guys if you could count to three, you could play for me. Sometimes four, but you'd be amazed. Sometimes guys can't count to three. That means you got a problem, you know. But right now, I think Michigan has guys that can count to three and a half. So we all right. They did a good job. They got on the sidelines, so they get this trade. They have numbers. We're going to plus over. We can stop this play. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, so it wasn't in Michigan where the dudes couldn't count three. I, I, that's, it's that's it's right. been a lot of places. It's been a lot of places. So you know what? <laughs> I'm just saying. That's why I, I love some key sweat. We say nobody, they can't count three. Sometimes they can't. You know, Michigan. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned uh, maintaining your – your assignment right uh yes. outside contain for your for your edge guy he lost it on that on that play where the running back bounced it on that uh on, on that tray well there was one where uh it was a little more apparent that mm-hmm. hey the, the ball is if it comes your way you got to be outside like he, i could see how a dude could get he thinks the play is the dude actually had the ball going up inside on the play where he got caught inside and dude bounced it on him. But on this one that we're about to show, uh, this one was one where the assignment integrity was lost. So I'm going to bring this up. And this is a lesson in assignment football that you are about to give me, them, us all at the same time. All right. So right now we have a first and 10. We have a blitz that Michigan likes a lot. This is going to be assignment error. To the field, they bring in the strong safety and the outside back. Okay, Ran this a lot versus uh, you know, UW. That means that this defensive end, he has force. He has quarterback, boot, and reverse. He has to turn everything back to the defense. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, he got greedy and played with bad eyes. He's like, I'm going to get a tackle for a loss. And there's the ball out the back end. Strictly assignment football. It's a good defensive uh, play call. It's a lack of execution by one guy. This then has worked quite well for them in the first three ball games when they have executed well. If 32 just stays and does his job, he takes the quarterback right now, it's three-yard tackle. Instead, 
10 yard, 12 yard game. And that's just execution. Right. And that was, you know, that was that, that was the story of that series. I mean, yeah, that, that's really what it was. Yeah. yeah. You, you had some, you know, you had some bad fits, linebacker safeties. You had the defensive line getting pushed off the ball uh, more than in that series than they had all day. I don't know that they got moved off the ball any the rest of the day. Not well, you, too strange. you know what was the problem that entire time, though? It was the tight end trades because they shifted their entire defensive line, linebackers are trying to get reset. They weren't sure. They were confused. So they got them on the sideline, set them down, say, tight end trade. This is all we're going to do, guys. They run in the same place. They just disguising it from one formation, going to another formation. That's just get set, make the calls up front, get your hand in the dirt. That's going to play Michigan football. That's all you got to tell the guys. Just calm down. Don't worry about it. It's just camouflage. It's like about somebody, a girl got a pretty dress on. Just pretty for a while. I mean, she go outside and it's raining, she's going to get wet. So it's all good. Don't worry about it. Keep on rolling. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, I don't know how the dudes made it to the games with you, Vance. I'll I just tell you I one thing. Man. You just showed two plays. My defensive man, number 32, made two errors on fourth. I asked him one thing. I was asking, does he like Gatorade? I don't tell him I like Gatorade. I like the blue kind. So you do the same thing one more time, you're going to be drinking blue Gatorade with me on the sideline. You lose contain one more time. It's not that hard. It's not that hard, so make your decision. Either you want to play or drink Gatorade. Either way, I'm good. Well, hey, that young fella did not want to drink Gatorade because he he Jalen Jalen Harrell has had himself in his first extended action, uh, and that's that's an important note. Like we talked about Rob Moore last week, that's a true freshman wow. out there taking a few number nineteen was out there taking a few lumps. That young fella has jumped a lot of dudes on the depth chart to be playing meaningful snaps. That uh, he has speed, he can cover. He's not afraid to stick his nose in there. And Jalen Harrell, interesting thing about him, see, he he is out of uh, Tampa, Berkeley Prep. So his one of his coaches was Garrett Reeves, and the former Michigan kicker. And so Garrett was telling me about him. He said, you know, I see people recruiting him as a defensive end. He's going to be a defensive end. He said, well, we played him as stand up linebacker. We, we play him a middle linebacker because he's such a high IQ guy. He could be the quarterback of the defense. Uh, you know, he was a guy who could, who, who could uh, read and react. You know, he wasn't just a see ball, get ball guy. He could actually, you know, read his keys and make plays. And then you add to it that he is a, you know, a kid who's about six, three uh, and can run really well for his size. You see why there's such excitement about him, but to your point, coach, Hey man, you got to be in the right place too. So you put all that talent with knowing where to be. I think you're really going to have something uh, here as we get deeper into the season. But uh, boy, one of the plays that you, that you pointed out, terrific execution all over the defense. And I wanted you to really tell us straight this one, Vance, because there were a few nuances that I felt like could be helpful to the fans. I advanced skies over cover one. Talk us through this. All right, it's third down and seven. Okay, so we're playing man free. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring both inside back and get pushed right up the middle, which I think is a great call. We're going to drop both defensive ends. They for slant for screen. We're playing man free in the back end. So you're going to get good push from the backers blitzing in the eight gap. And what a, what a great technique by the nickelback. He doesn't flatter that. He sits on, on the re- receiver at the sticks. He comes around clean. This is a nice play. It's a good call defensively. Yeah, you, know, you get a lot push of that in the Mike McDonald. Face, third and seven. You get defensive ends. They're in great position for the slants, for screens. So it forces the quarterback to throw the longest throw to the number two receiver in the slot. So Vance, I like the call. You know, defensive backs coach that you are, can you explain why why Dax is given this stagger, is playing at a different level than the other two defensive backs, knowing that this ball is going to be coming out hot? Well, if you put all – let's say he went to press. Now you have three guys pressing. They're in great position offensively to run pick patterns. Mm -hmm. So now if you play at different levels, guys can fight over the top of picks and those type of things. So, again, it's a great job coaching by these guys. And it's a great job of the players communicating what they need to do to make sure that they don't get picked. 
I mean, it's just, it, again, great coaching, great call. The execution on this play, I love I love the call, how they executed and how they played this play. Man, Dax Hill is just. I mean, he, he comes around playing. He keeps the offhand off of him. It is a very nice play. But it starts with the push by the linebacker in the quarterback's face and the defensive end dropping. That's good football. And if the fans can't get excited about them, I just don't know. <laughs> Let me get some new fans. That's all I got to tell you right now. Give me somebody that's going to get out those seats, stand up, and cheer. Saying, singing, hell to the bitches. Let's go. I'm not mad at nobody. <laughs> you know, I think I think the majority of fans, the, you know, the majority are really excited. They just don't want to get – they don't want to get too excited. They want to keep it in perspective and say, all right, it's three games, but it's going to be tougher – when they get in the Big Ten, which we, you know, which we understand, it is. We agree, but but Sam, enjoy the moment. Hey, enjoy bro. where you are today. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Enjoy today. Have fun today. Let's celebrate today, and that's worry about tomorrow when it comes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm right there with you. All right, so let's get into that uh, a play that I started the show earlier with the one linebacker defense. All right, Vance. Late safety fit. Let's get into this one. This is one of the ones where. All right, we are in a one linebacker defense because they're in a three, four. Mm -hmm. So again, they have enough guys up front to block anything we do. We technically are short in the box. So that safety right here, he has to be a fitter in the box with that arrow but he's also 12 yards deep. So they have an advantage here. As you can see, because it's a one linebacker defense, they double the center and climb on a backer. There's nobody to run fit there. Mm -hmm. We are short by one guy. So that was, again, we're still talking about, that's, it, it, we're still talking about the, the first quarter of this game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, that series where they were able to get a, a few things going only in that second series of the, of the game, Vance, and you just saw Michigan really slam the door from that point on. I mean, it was, I think they had two more first downs mm -hmm. in the first half. Both of those first downs came on fourth down conversions, and one of those, Vance, one of those fourth down conversions was, was a roughing penalty yeah. that extended the drive. So, I mean, you talk about – completely getting it together and, and not giving them any life, the adjustments and the execution both picked up 10 notches after that second series. It, it really did. And I think that the coaches settled down as far as they felt they were going to see, and that helped them out a lot. They got the players in the right position. The players wouldn't play and had some fun. And no, when you run in uh, multiple fronts, they run from four down to a three, four defense. Anytime you're in a three, four defense and you have to adjust an inside backer out, you will be in a one linebacker defense. Mm. When you are in a four, two, five defense, you're going to always have two linebacks in the box because the secondary is going to make most of your adjustments. So that last play, they were in a three down front. You know, you had a zero, two fours, two outside backers. That means now versus three wide receivers, inside backer, if he has to walk out, that's a run read. So if you have an offense, they're going to run past option. They should check to a run of his first 10 because there are not enough guys in the box on paper, at least, to say you can stop the run. All right. So, all right. Exactly. This is a great segue, fans. I thought about you again, man. I, As we were watching this game, I recall a couple of instances from the Washington game where you were like, man, that play had no chance of working against the defense. Mike McDonald <laughs> had a call here. Yeah, I, I, he said, I don't know. Why didn't they check? Why didn't they do something different than what they did? Because – what Mike McDonald had called, they were not going to have a successful play unless somebody on defense busted. And so I thought about that, thought about that with this play. So I need the expert eyes on it. You tell me what I'm not seeing. What I'm not seeing that the that the Northern Illinois offense saw that made them think this play was going to work. I was like, man, this doesn't look right. <laughs> this, doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't look like it's going to be successful, Vance. Yeah, Michigan blitzing from the field. You got the outside back and the safety coming. This is the first and 10 call, so it comes from the sideline in reverse. They are running reverse into a field blitz. And so Michigan has numbers, and there's no one to block the corner or the inside back. 
this this is like stealing. This, this is this is sad. But again, like, they have no chance. They I, could raise a white flag and say, "I give up." Uh, does the can the quarterback not make checks? Uh, well, right now you you hope that because they got a reverse call here that everybody chases and they go down inside, but they didn't. They actually did a great job reading the keys. They read the guys that they were aligned on, and those guys are trying to reach them up front. So they stayed outside. <laughs> this play has no chance at all. Great call, great execution. Great execution. That's the key. Great execution. Yeah, we you've said that a lot, Van. So it's clear, and you made it clear at the beginning of this of this week's breakdown that you are excited about this defense. You think it's a good defense. Clearly, though, the the tests are going to get tougher, are going to get harder as you get in Big Ten play. You know, Rutgers is an improved team, for instance. Michigan State looks good. Uh, hey, say what you will about Ohio State, their defense struggling, but they can score points. You know, they can light up the scoreboard. So you got to go to Wisconsin. There are going to be some tough tests in there. So watching this defense, seeing the strengths, and seeing the things that you think they need to work on, how do you think teams are going to hit them? Where do you think they're vulnerable? What do you think they need to tighten up as they get in the Big Ten play? They need to get ready for tight end trades, motions. As you saw in this ball game, at times, especially that second series, Michigan has some issues. And they've shown some of the same problems in the first two ball games. People who move people around and make you adjust, you have to rethink and recount initially from what you had to do. And those are some of the concerns I have. The next thing is, can we play man-to-man? When you talk about Ohio State, you talk about Penn State, uh, Minnesota, we run a lot of uh, cover four. We run four press. So four press is that a guy walks up and you have that quarter, but when you walk up to press, you're man-to-man. You have no help anywhere unless the guy runs a post foul. So if a guy runs a deep go round, you're on your own. Well, if you're playing man-free, at least I got a guy in the post that might get over the top. So, again, you start running four press against Ohio State and Penn State, and they start throwing the ball weak side, can you hold up in quarters? I don't know that right now because the receivers I've seen in the first three ball games, I mean, they didn't appear that they could really run. Except and, One uh, exception is the kid from Western Michigan where he – where Vince where Vince broke up that uh, – he broke up that nine route. Yeah, didn't look for the ball. He yeah. played his hand. Yeah, that, that dude is, is, is legit fast, like fast, fast. He, he looks legit fast, but again, if the quarterback throws it out there, and let the guy run for it, that, that was a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that I see is that they have yet to show me that they can walk up and press and hold up because for press, again, it's, you got to be special now because technically it's like running zero coverage because you're only rushing four. You know, but scheme-wise, the pressures he does, he's bringing inside backs, dropping defensive ends, that can cause a lot of confusion for offensive people. But they need to get ready for tight end trades, for motions, for bunch formation. Those are the things that if I was on offense right now, that's how I would attack Michigan on defense. I'm going to make them move the front. As you saw this past week, they trade the tight ends. They switch six people on defense. They move two, Michigan switched six people. So if I do that enough, the defensive line is going to get tired of jumping all over the place. So I'm going to try to do those type of things, keep them off balance, try to get numbers like you had this, this past weekend, four on three, and run the football. Against Wisconsin, guess what they're going to do? They, they're going to have a tackle playing tight end, and you want to get ready to buckle down and get off of blocks. And if you're in quarters and that safety sitting 12 yards deep trying to stop the run, they're getting six yards a clip, you're not going to beat Wisconsin doing that. They're going to force you to walk up and play man and play close to the line of scrimmage. You're going to have to prove you can do it. Exactly. You're going to have to say, well, my corners can cover because you against Wisconsin, you need the states to stop the run. If you can't stop the run with the states in the box, you're in trouble. You playing too deep a quarter, you're not stopping Wisconsin because uh-huh. they're going to run the football. I don't care who's the head coach there for the past 20 years. They all do the same thing. They're going to run that football. Yeah, I was watching uh, Monday Night Football, and the Lions stayed in too high, and they were yep. running it down their throat. Green Bay was patient, and as soon as they got it too high, my man threw it over the top. Mm-hmm. And I, when I look at Ohio State, that's Ohio State, that's Penn State, 
I mean, they're going to try to, if you give them too high, they're going to try to run the football. They'll take a five-yard game. If it's second and five, that's when the football for the offense. And you can't afford to be second and five versus those teams, especially if you got to go on the road. It's one thing being at home, the fans on your side, but on the road, you don't want to be in second and five. A defensive play caller, man, that's a tough call right now because they can do anything to you. I mean, it's a free for all because third and five is not a bad situation for an offense. You hold them on second and five. But again, get ready for tight end trades, for motions, for bunches, those type of things, and see how they adjust. Because I go in the ball game, I want to know if you're in three, four, or four, three, and I can check the certain runs based on your front. Because they're in three, four, and I walk three wide receivers out. You know, one linebacker defense, I'm checking to run. You don't have enough guys to stop. Mm-hmm. If you're in a four, two, five, it's a whole different situation. So it's, that's what they're going to have to get into when they get into conference play. Because the offensive linemen are going to be a lot better than what they've seen so far this season. But so far, so good, man. I I don't know that I've heard you this excited about a Michigan defense in a while, man. You I tell you what, it fired is, up I'm, about this one. Hey, you know I'm I'm having flashbacks from when I was there, '97. The way they playing defense right now, they are aggressive. The players are having fun. The coaches on the sideline look like they're having a good time. And like I said, the fans can't get excited for what they've seen in the first three ball games. There's something wrong with them. Now you know I live in Colorado. And that stuff is legal. If I need to mail the fans in Michigan some stuff, please let me know. This is legal in Colorado. Now, I hadn't tried this, this stuff myself, you see, but I don't mind going to the store and mailing some, some stuff to the fans to let's go, get out the seats, and let's have a party. I'm good. <laughs> I don't know what you can get in Colorado with fire them up, man. Somebody mellow them out. But, yeah, I hear you. You're absolutely right. This is, especially for a team that was two and four last year, you start out season three and oh, you look as good as they have looked in those three games. You don't downplay that. That's that's progress. And now let's see what they can do with that foundation they've laid here in the non-conference. You have laid a great foundation for the rest of the season, Vance Bedford and these breakdowns. I love you, brother. You You make <laughs> these breakdowns fun. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to your next breakdown next week when we break down the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. That's going to be a win. You heard it here first. It's going to be a 21-point win by the Wolverines. So, hey, I'm betting all my money that I'm working right now. I forgot I don't have no job. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's a beautiful thing. (laughs) I advance, folks. Until next week, we'll see you in the next edition of the Michigan Insider Film Breakdown. Go Blue.